replica plating. Here we are going to screen transconjugants for a number of activities. Retrieve the plates you spread last session. Remember anything growing on both ampicillin and tetracycline should be a transconjugant from the filter mating of the donor and the recipient. The numbers you see will vary depending on the success of the mating. 10 colonies will be chosen at random from your transconjugants for screening. You will use a casein plate, a minimum medium plate supplemented with glucose, a tryptone soya agar plate containing ampicillin and tetracycline, and a starch plate. It is up to you to decide the correct order of the plates to be used. The plates are laid out here in a random order to show the procedure for the replica plating. Once you have decided the correct order in which you will inoculate your plates, mark a line on the side of the base of each plate at the 12 o'clock position and lay them out on the grid sheet facing upwards. It is important that you can lay the plates out again in the same orientation after incubation. Aseptically remove a cocktail stick from the glass universal. This can be a little tricky, but take your time and work close to the flame. Now touch the cocktail stick off one of the colonies to be screened. Be very careful not to take any of the agar medium in the transfer, just the colony. Now touch the cocktail stick against the agar at the same numbered position on each of the four plates. Paying attention to aseptic technique is critical. Repeat this process for nine more colonies, leaving space on the plate between the squares used. These plates will now be sent for incubation. After incubation, lay out the plates on the grid sheet again with the mark you made at 12 o'clock. For the minimal medium with glucose and the ampicillin tetracycline TSA plate, you are looking for the presence or absence of growth at each position used. For 
of the casein plate, growth is expected if replica plating has been successful and you are looking for the presence or absence of a halo of casein clearing at each position. In order to visualize if starch has been utilized by the replicates on the starch plate, it is necessary to add a few drops of iodine. Again, growth is expected on this plate and its absence implies poor replica transfer. A clearing in the blue-black color of the agar around the growth indicates starch has been hydrolyzed. Collate a profile for each of the colonies you screened. Remember, one of your plates acts as a control, so it should be assessed first before further conclusions are drawn.